Taiwan, a country I'm proud to say I'm from, in my career as a media entrepreneur. I've spoken to movers and shakers here who make global headlines. But what I'm most excited about are the up and coming forces of my generation. They're young, they're creative, they dare to defy the status quo. Follow me as I meet emerging leaders of Taiwan who lift us, who inspire us, who are changing the world, starting in Taiwan. This is Game Changers with Emily Waiwu. Welcome back to the very last episode of the season. Our game changer today, she is a superstar. Yan Yizeng is one of the most talented athletes of our generation. And I'm not talking about just Taiwan, I'm talking in the world. Yani is a professional golfer. She's the youngest player ever in the world to win five major championships. That put her ahead of even Tiger Woods. In 2012, she was Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. By the time she was 24, she was already a living legend. And today, Yanni is 34 years old, she's fighting off injuries, and she's making a comeback. Let's please welcome our game changer today, a golf legend, a superstar, a star of Taiwan, Yanni Zeng. Hey. Hi. Thanks for having me Thank here. you for coming. You. What an honor. Tell us, what have you been up to? Uh, I had the surgery two months ago, so I'm just doing a lot of the recovery and rehabbing and try to work my way back on the LPGA Tour. So if you won four majors, 15 LPGA titles, you've spent 109 weeks ranked number one in the world. Then you got injured, and that was about 10 years ago. So now you're making a comeback. So what, what I'm wondering is, you know, what they say about, you know, the difference between our 20s and our 30s is that in our 30s, we get to do things smarter this time, more efficient, a little bit different. Are you playing differently this time, do you think? Um, I don't think I'm playing differently, but I, for sure I train differently and then I think it's been more efficient because I don't recover as well like 20s mm. and then I don't have that much of an energy like 20s, but I still love golf. I feel like I'm more in love golf than the 20s. So that gave me a lot of uh, motivation, still have a lot of passion about golf. I really love and I'm hoping one day I'll be back and this is what I'm looking for. I dreaming over every day. There's one particular year that you won 12 international events in one year. That was crazy too. <laughs> <laughs> And at one point, you were the fastest player in LPGA history to cross the $8 million mark in career earnings. Really fast track. To be world number one, what is it like to yeah, be in that moment? Um, I feel on that time, my goal, my dream is very clear. I had mm. my first dream when I was 12 to become the world number one. So after 10, 10 years, I become world number one. So I, in, in this 10 years, my goal is very clear that I know what I need to do. I have a little puzzle that I want to make sure every part of a puzzle that is connect. So every day I wake up, I training, workouts, and just the past because you don't know what's going to happen. And then you're exciting what's going to happen. I feel I'm very lucky to, mm. to achieve my dream so quickly. Um, was a lot of pressure? Did you... I was happy first <laughs> until I get to one number one. I didn't know that one number one needs to handle that much pressure. Mm. I think I was okay inside the rope on the golf course, but when I get to outside to face the fans, face the media and that fans to the sponsors, and I think that's how it gets harder <laughs> because I was so young, I don't know uh, what to do and I'm not very good at saying no. <laughs> so I was trying to make everybody happy and that's like hard. <laughs> and so I kind of try to do better too. I actually training mm. harder, I work harder. I built my team better too. Like I have like physio trainer and those like big team with like spending time with me. And I don't have those before we're number one. You grew up um, on the uh, practice uh, golf range. Um, in yes. Taiwan, you didn't play on the course growing up. So you're on the course and you have a caddy who's with you and otherwise you're alone and spectator yeah. just all eyes on you. Do you drown out the spectators? What is no, that moment? I, I actually love the spectators. Uh -huh. I think that 
I, I love the fans and I feel like when they're watching, I actually play better. When there is no one watching, I just feel like, oh, I'll just practice at home, but that's not exciting. So I really love enjoying the fans. I love when I make the putt, they clap for me. I love when I hit the bombs and they like clap like crazy. So I kind of enjoy that feeling, but when it gets to time that you don't get as confident, you kind of afraid what people think about you. But I feel like they they are always having my motivation to be a better person, to be a better player. And so by the time that you were 24, you were splashed. And how would you categorize the the years that followed? Um, yeah, it's been it's been really tough last 10 years. Yeah, and just time flies. <laughs> so I wish I had that 10 year past, like when I was 12. But um, I feel like I learned I learned a lot through this uh, down times, and I uh, last ten years I always looking for the result. Like I, I practice, I want to see the result like immediately, but it's impossible. And I feel like I was so focused on the trophy that I really wanted. But uh, for me, it feels like the harder you try, the worse you get. <laughs> And you know, the more you know, the more you don't know. So now I just really want to be myself. I actually look um, who I am when I was 12. Like I want to bring out that kids that love playing golf, doesn't matter what the result is. I just really love hitting balls and putting and just feels myself on the golf course of that feeling. So I was trying to bring back of that feeling yeah. to enjoy every moment of it and try to just live in the moment and play one shot at a time. And I think that's how I play my best. So now this is actually my goal. Like I just want to enjoy golf because I know if I can enjoy this game and no one can beat me. <laughs> golf is like a love and hate relationship. But yeah. I always, at the end, I always love golf more than hate golf. So even sometimes it sucks, but um, just like life too, you know, it's hard to always playing the best, but you are also enjoying the pressure. You always enjoy the the stress, you know, try to be a friend with them. Um, when you're talking about how much you love golf and that it's really radiating the way you're speaking. And I think I'm just terribly excited for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited too. I, I mean, like this two years, I just dealing with my hips and yeah. surgery yeah. and it just, it takes a lot of time, and for me, I'm not very patient. I just want to go out and play, <laughs> play, play. In this, in this 15 years, the first time I actually slow down the pace because I know if I rush, it's not good for my future. Yeah. So I just need to yeah. take time. And but every day I'm watching golf. Like yeah. I, I want to go back. Even I can't practice, but I do a lot of imagining, training, and hopefully when I get back out there and. It will, it will be the same as what I imagined. So. Yeah. Do you feel that it, there's less pressure or more? Less because you're playing for the love of it this time. You're yes. playing slower, you're playing smarter. Um, so it sounds to me that it's calmer. Yeah, I think it should be less pressure. Uh -huh. But I feel like for me, I was putting a lot of high expectation on myself, but I don't think it's good for right now. Mm. But. I think you always need to have that attitude because as hard as you work, you of course you're going to have a high expectation. Now I feel like I want to stay relaxed a little bit. My goal is not like get back to world number one. My goal is to get back on tour and to enjoy the game that I love, to just to hit the shot that I, f I imagine of it. So I think that's the, the win for me. I mean, there is always a pressure, I believe, when I go back, mm. because even now I think of, I still want to win, but I think I, I still need that attitude, otherwise I won't go back. Right. If I don't want right. to win, I'll just, you know, retire. So to have that attitude, I think it's very important for me, and that's how drives me to practice hard, too. Oftentimes you talk about the resilience of a person, um, but I, what I love about what you're doing now is, yeah. I'm hugely competitive, but I'm gonna set that aside right now yeah. and I'm gonna do what's good for me. I wanna take a break. Okay. <laughs> and when we come back, I wanna ask you about your childhood and how you got here. Okay.
Hey, welcome back to Game Changers with Emily Y. Wu. This is where I talk to the cool young hip people in Taiwan who's doing amazing things in the world. Today, we've been talking to Yanni Zhen, world number one golfer, and she's making a comeback. Yanni, you started playing when you were five. Early on in our season, um, we talked to a woman named Gina Pan. She's raising the visibility of women in basketball for high school and college and professional athletes. And she talked about how as a young athlete growing up, there was a lack of role models, female role models. What was it like for you? Was that similar experience for you or did you have uh, yes. really good role models? Uh, yes, I also have a good role model that I look up. Like I hope one day I can be like him or her. And of course, Tiger Woods is one of it. And the, the LPG is Annika Sorenstein. They both are former world number one. and. They both are the role model I always look up. Like Tyro who had a lot of injuries and then he's trying to fight back and people think, oh, he should retire, like he can't do it anymore, he can't win the PJ Tour. But just recently I heard his conference, he will still want to win, otherwise he won't be here. Mm. And I feel like that's the same mentality that I want to have or I have. So uh, I think it's, it's always good to have someone you look up that someone you can learn from it because if there's nothing in front of you, you kind of don't know where to go. I think if you, but if you have a role model and I think that will help you to be on the right track. A lot of young athletes look up to you. What have you noticed about how they look up to you as a role model? Is there a cultural difference? In Taiwan, the, the young player, the, they're more shy. Mm. Like they're afraid to come up to me to ask me questions and ask me pictures or just... But when I'm in US, when the younger player that saw me, they come out watch like 10 questions <laughs> and they come out and watch. Like they're like questioning a lot about your life growing up and where you're from and what did you practice and show me their swings and... So I think those two cultures are very different. And I feel like when in US, um, the player is more confident because I think we grow them up to learn to be humble, like encourage, they were like shy. They don't come out and say, yes, I'm good, you know, but in US they're like, yes, I'm good. I'm very good at it. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's very two different culture, but I think I would advise to younger player, they you need to you know, go out to explore the war and to see what's best for you. Because for me, I kind of learn who I am and be myself and what attitude suits me best. Yeah. Because when I talk to the mental coach in you not in US, it doesn't suit me. Like that attitude, you know, you come out thinking you are the best, but I feel like uh, that's kind of not what my culture is. What were the values you grew up with? I think it's more like in Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I always learn to be humble when people uh, cheer for you. you. You just say thank you. You say, oh, no, 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 I'm not like that. Oh. <laughs> like I'm still working on it. But in the US, they, when they say good shot to you, like thank you. You know, it's like very, yeah. like, I don't know how to say that. You're open minded. You know, you, yeah. you, you expect, you embrace the people that accomplish it to you. But in here, you're like, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not that good, you know, I'm just lucky. But you're not, you're, you're great. So I think sometimes I think you just need to embrace that. Yeah, for uh, Taiwanese players or Asian young players who, right, we're taught to be humble. What would you tell a young player how to accept, learn to accept compliments and say, yeah, you're great? Uh, I think it takes time and mm. it, it takes practice too. Even now, I am still practice every day. Like I try to think about uh, today what, I can try to accomplish other people and I try to embrace accomplish too. I try to uh, think about what I'm thankful for today. Every day I write down two, three things to thanks for today. And I think that's, mm. that needs to practice. So when, when you have this in mind, when, some, when next time you met people, when they accomplish to you, you, just, you say thank you and you just, maybe you can share your experience that why you're so good at it. You know, I think they would love to hear it too. Great tip. Speaking of compliments, I mean, one of the biggest compliments to a Taiwanese person is to say they are the star of Taiwan, Taiwan Zhi Guang. Yes. This is an honorary title that's given to the, only the greatest of the great. 
This is um, Academy Award winner uh, An Li, for example. This is yeah. you. This is uh, Major League Baseball pitcher Wang Jianming and um, recent cast of Olympians coming from Taiwan. What does that title mean to you, being a Taiwan Zhiguang star of Taiwan? Uh, it means a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, I, it's a, I think it's a big honor to be mm. known of part of this great athlete. And I think at the first, I do feel a little pressure. Like, I don't know what is sort of Taiwan means. Yeah. You know, I don't know how much people are looking at you, like how much people want you to play good. So I think at the first, for me, it's a little bit hard to digest, per se. But mm -hmm. now I embrace this title, you know, I, every time when people are up to you, oh, your Taiwan's gone. And I was like, thank you, but I'm, I'm still trying to work on my, my way back. Like I will tell them, sure, my experience right now, but instead of, I was afraid to hear of this war. I was afraid to- You were, you were afraid of it I, I for used a little to bit. Be. Yeah, when I, when my mind is not as good in this, I was afraid to hear this war because I, I don't know what to expect. And I was playing, really bad on that time, mm. I feel like I'm not deserved this title. I feel like I was a very embarrassing actually <laughs> to have this title. And, but right now I don't feel that anymore. Uh, I just, I feel more thankful that they give me this title and I just feel more honored than everything. So. I'm so humbled to be in your presence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, well, okay, so looking ahead, you will start playing again in October? Yes, I hope um, What is life on the road for you? Um, I enjoy traveling a lot. Uh, we travel about 25 weeks every year. But <laughs> I feel like I haven't traveled for two, three years now. I was mm. a little afraid because I'm getting older. I'm not sure how my recovery goes, but I'm still excited to get back on tour and I think I, I will have another half year to, to prepare and I think I'll, I'll be ready when I get back there. I want to kick some ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will do incredibly well. Thank you. Now here's a question that we ask everybody here. Out of your accomplishments so far, I mean, world number one, the different titles you still hold in the uh, history of golf, of all your accomplishments, how much was given to you and how much did you fight for? I feel like it's all given to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like, this is a great question, <laughs> but I feel I'm very lucky to mm. have a lot of great people that around me. <clears throat> yeah, I love crying, yeah. <laughs> sorry, okay. most of the people saw me cry before I'm I did, sorry. But. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I feel very lucky to have uh, all the great people around me and I I know I work hard, but if I don't have those people around me or <clears throat> then I won't be here. Like I won't accomplish all the great things and and I feel like God gave me a lot of uh, this is my gift. I feel like I'm born to play golf. So, um, last few years, I actually think I don't deserve it. But, but this few years, I just thanks for all that. I have this gift to bring off and I will always work hard. I don't need people to tell me to work hard and mm. I will always do that. Mm. So for this accomplish, uh, I feel like it's all bonus. So whatever I do, and I'm very lucky that I, I enjoy the things that I'm doing right now. So if in the future, uh, whatever is happening, I'll be very grateful and thankful. Yeah. I think you're, you're, you're such a beautiful human being. <laughs> I think so. I just love to cry. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 
I just cry. Every time I just hope I hopefully I'm not crying, but I'm just uh, very emotional and I think it's good and bad because mm -hmm. I, I care about people and sometimes when people say bad things about me, it, I'm hurt. But but now I just need to be strong inside so I don't care what other people say. If I'm good, I'm good. You know? So I don't, I'm not regrets the things I'm do. So I, I work hard and I know what I'm doing. Uh, even the day I retire, I'm not regretting anything. So. We look at people as accomplished as you and it looks so easy because all we see is you taking that swing and the ball making it in and you getting the championship and then you getting yeah. the awards. It seems so easy. Um, and obviously there's so much more behind the scene that I think when we do Look at that, yeah. it gives us so much inspiration because I think a lot of people look at you and say, I want to yeah. do that. If she could do it, I could too. Yeah, I, I want to inspire people that if I can do it, they can do it too. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. also to say you can make a comeback. I mean, that's so much courage. Our bodies are getting older. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, so I'm proud of myself. I am proud that I'm still mm. not giving up on this. Yeah. Because a lot of people think, oh, you have done so much. You have done everything you can and you accomplish a lot of good stuff. So even you retire now, no one's going to say anything. But for me, like I say, I, I love golf and I, I want to get back on, on tour. I want to get back on the golf course too be myself to enjoy everything I can and it doesn't matter what I can do for the result but I think that's what I need to do right now and that's what I'm looking forward to do. Yeah, I'm so excited for you. I uh, hope you guys can keep supporting me. <laughs> so I will, uh, just want to thank all the people that from Taiwan, they gave me a lot of love to, and support. Uh, even there is some people that still don't think I can play but uh, I'll improve to you guys that I still got it. <laughs> and thank you for being an inspiration to us because just by being you, you are being a leader for us. That's an incredible thing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Yanni Zen, star of Taiwan, golf player, making her comeback. And please do uh, watch out for October for your first games. Yes. And you can follow Yanni on all her socials. As for me, this is Emily Waiwu. You can find me on my socials. Now you've been watching Taiwan Plus and thank you for staying with us the entire season for Game Changers. We'll see you back soon.